Hello, everybody. Welcome to Go Global World 25th GGW Sharks. It's been 25 events so far since uh, December last year when we were uh, really killing it, like really making so cool events together with you because of your interest, because of investors. And uh, it's just growing. And you know what? We have paid zero money in marketing because you are supporting us and it's really great. And we are making this event free for you because of that. Now, uh, everyone wants to uh, pitch here. Uh, and so we will give a chance as many people uh, as possible. We will have some rules. So please follow these rules. And uh, if you don't have a chance to pitch or you, were, you already pitched, support others uh, on, uh, uh, on the event in the chat. We also have investors in the chat. Uh, it's always like that. Uh, so connect, exchange contacts, support each other. Please do not sell anything to each other. Uh, it's really important. It's a place where you uh, and us helping each other. Now, I'm going to show you a few slides about Go Global World and the rules, and then I'll present the judges and we will jump right into the event. Go Global World is a matchmaking platform. It's a startup and investor ecosystem where we connect relevant investors with relevant startups. And we recently became product of the day on product hunt because uh, it's uh, something people want. Now, why? Uh, because we create specific um, technology where you can connect not only on the platform, but also outside the platform. And uh, the information is put uh, so straightforward and clear. So investors can decide faster, startups can decide faster. And we also run independent verification. Now, how it works on the platform, uh, 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 and a startup has one pager. When you fill in your profile, uh, the system is creating you a beautiful one pager with the information we verified with many investors. So you don't have to guess what exactly you need to show investors. We are asking you the right questions so to, to put it in your profile. But uh, you know what? This profile is branded with your name and you can share this branded link with investors that contain your elevator pitch video, text pitch, your team information, your team metrics, and your pitch deck. So you don't have to put a lot of files everywhere in the email and give a very complex message. Investors have one pager as well, uh, but it's not a static one pager like you would find on LinkedIn. Uh, on this page, you can see their investment criteria uh, and decide if you're fit for them or not. And uh, there is a, a button, apply for funding, where uh, you uh, once you click, uh, the system is asking you a few questions and uh, it's um, uh, com uh, matching you against criteria of the investors. So if you are a fit, you'll be notified and investors will be notified. And if you're not a fit, the, it will not waste the time of investors and yours as well. You will be uh, also uh, aware of that. And the system will offer you other investors. And uh, uh, at the same time, uh, investors will get other deal flow from other investors as well. So it's an active link and active uh, uh, matchmaking within the platform and outside the platform. And the use case is very simple for investors because uh, investors get an, uh, uh, a lot of funding requests from startups, like uh, some investors say 100 a day, and 99% of them are absolutely irrelevant. And so instead of responding to everyone and trying to manually process this, you share this link with your branded uh, name uh, on it. and. And so the system will actually take uh, process this uh, funding request your, uh, on your behalf and will take a decision uh, also on your behalf and notify on any good startups that's approaching to you. That's how it works. And uh, it's just a very quick snapshot. We also give you analytics. Analytics on the platform, what's happening with your profile and how this matchmaking turns into deals. And your, we analyze also your external deal flow that nobody is doing on the market. So we really measure your external deal flow, those people who are applying for funding. So you can evaluate your own network and see how it turns you into actually real good deals you're looking for. And uh, that's probably it, what uh, we do at Google World. We have a lot of startups already verified and joined the platform, and we have almost 70 funds already registered and approved on the platform. So you can match with them already now. And we match not only startups and investors, we also match investors to investors and startups to advisors. So don't wait, just join, create your profiles and start matching. I'm gonna share with you the links uh, after I um, begin the session. So GGW Sharks 25th, this is the 25th event. So far, it's been like seven or eight months we're running the show and it's been a success. And today's investors are uh, Matthew Stoke, AJ uh, uh, Koshal, uh, Angelica Moroni, 
uh, Guillermo Crocos and uh, Peter Bruce Clark. Peter is going to join in a bit, uh, hopefully. And uh, uh, I'm going to let investors to present themselves in a minute. But now let's talk about the rules. That these rules are making this event great, and because everyone is uh, actually trying to follow them, including us. So please keep yourself muted all the time, except for investors. It's super important because you can interrupt someone speaking, and it can it can be also you. And uh, so you don't want uh, to ruin your uh, and, and first impression in front of investors. So please do this. It's important. Raise your hand to pitch, and uh, we're gonna let uh, everyone to pitch in, in in the order we receive hands. Uh, you get two minute elevator pitch plus questions. So if you uh, surpass two minutes, then we will have a hard stop. And uh, if you don't do uh, you didn't say something, then you gotta respond questions on. Uh, it's uh, only for uh, new startups with sales, evidence of OIP, and scalable business model. Please respect time. It's a two hours event maximum, and uh, GGW platform members speech first, and after them uh, will go those who didn't pitch last time, and then the rest of the audience. Uh, so just uh, my team will be on the back end, will be creating a list, and sometimes I'll share this. Sometimes we update the list because somebody, somebody jumps off or something. There are plenty of reasons why we update. Please don't push my team to uh, be uh, to make you first uh, uh, give you priority among others. My team doing this independently, and they're not gonna uh, give uh, anyone priority over others. It's sh it should be fair to everyone. Now, uh, if you don't get time to pitch, don't get upset. Please email us that you want to pitch the next event, and we'll make sure you get this priority. Uh, and uh, if you would have any questions to me and my team, this is the contacts info at gogobo.org. Remember, this is a networking web, so network in the chat, help out in, uh, in the chat, and investors also are on this chat. So use every opportunity to connect, build these connections, and bring value to each other. And if I see someone is selling to someone, so we can actually kick off, uh, kick out people from uh, the uh, from this session. Please don't sell anything. It's important that we are helping each other. Each other. It's not a sales event. Now, uh, how to make this uh, elevator two minute elevator pitch ideal? Uh, well, keep it as a story. Get to the point of what you do and why you're unique. And investors want to see your traction. So mention something about the traction so it may create some interest from investors and then they will may uh, may ask you some additional questions if you mm, pitched before and uh, you uh, these investors have seen you before you probably want to say what has significantly changed since you pitched last time so it's important because otherwise uh, you may actually ruin your reputation of pitching the same thing to the same people and we, we don't want to uh, do that well, uh, network and uh, connect with us. So, uh, if you want to know more about Google Board, go on our website. There is a page for investors. There is a, a landing page for startups. So we explain what we do in uh, real uh, good use cases and uh, details. And uh, this is our context. Reach out, uh, to, uh, reach out to us at any time. And here with me on uh, this chat, there is uh, also um, um, uh, my team, Go Global World. So you can text them. Uh, here in uh, Zoom, and also uh, Puri uh, represents Go Global World, so he also can ask question, uh, answer your questions. That's it on my end, and now it's time to turn uh, to investors and ask uh, ask them to present themselves. Angelica, you want to go first? Thank you, Daniel. Hello, everybody. My name is Angelica Morone. I am the um, President and founder of my own hedge fund manager, but I'm also a, a business angel. What do I do as a business angel? I try to help startups get to the next stage. Um, right now, I have 14 startups in my portfolio. I tend to be interested in startups that are doing something absolutely meaningful to change the lives of people or the planet. And um, this is what is called impact investing, and it is what drives me. I usually like to get involved with my heart first emotionally, then I, I trigger my brain and then I let the tummy make the final decision. I've been here, as Daniel said, almost since the beginning. I am based in Lugano, Switzerland. So I am nine hours uh, ahead of most of you. It's evening here, but it is my pleasure to be here and good luck to all the pitching companies. Thank you so much. And it's always great to have you, Angelica, with us. We connected Angelica with, I think, with 100 entrepreneurs already she selected. I don't know, for the past seven months. <laughs> yeah. All right, Matthew, your turn. Hi, I'm Matthew Stokey. I'm a venture associate at VU Venture Partners. Uh, I've been doing this the uh, global world for quite a while now. It's always a lot of fun. Um, 
our check sizes range from 50,000 all the way up to a million dollars. We're industry and location agnostic. Um, we have investments on pretty much every continent right now, and we're going to continue to kind of grow. Uh, we look for the largest um, market opportunity. So we really want, you know, a target market of around 10 billion. That way you can only get 1% of it still become a unicorn. And I will put my LinkedIn profile in the chat for everybody. Perfect. Thank you so much, Matthew. Great to have you with us, uh, as always. Uh, and uh, uh, we're moving on. And uh, Guillermo, your turn. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. My name is Guillermo Grosco. So I go by Guy for short. My full name is a little complicated for most. <laughs> I'm uh, located here in Boston, Massachusetts, currently an investor associate at BDev Ventures. Um, our Check sizes usually range from 300,000 to about 3 million. And our focus right now is B2B SaaS. We're industry agnostic. So as long as a company pretty much has a large tangible addressable market, we tend to go after them. Right now we have about 18 portfolio companies. We actually closed a deal yesterday, set to close a few more over the next couple of days. And yeah, very excited to be a part of this call. This is my first one. So bear with me. I'm also learning on the fly too, but really excited to be here and happy to meet all of you. We're excited to have you uh, uh, with us too. So thank you for being with us and congratulations with your recent investment. Thank you. Uh, AJ, your turn. You're going to kick all this global uh, session of uh, GGW 25th. <laughs> all right, fantastic. Um, hey, hey, folks. Uh, I'm an investor for JLL Spark. Uh, it's the corporate fund for JLL. Um, so just in case you don't know who JLL is, uh, JLL is a large corporate real estate or commercial real estate services company. So whether it's, you know, brokerage or capital markets for, um, you know, asset owners or folks looking to buy large buildings, we assist with that. Or for large corporate occupiers like Google, Meta, Amazon, we'll manage their end-to-end -end real estate footprint for the campus that they, um, you know, work in. Um, we've been around as a fund for about six years, largely invest kind of at the intersection of commercial real estate and technology. So that broadly applies to, you know, commercial prop tech solutions, sustainability in the built world. Uh, as well as some future of work technology. Um, so if you see me go out, it doesn't mean that your your, uh, your company isn't compelling. It's just we probably don't invest in that area. Um, largely check sizes from seed to series B uh, or, or ranges from seed to series B. We'll invest anywhere from one to 10 million on an initial investment. Uh, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to offer. Thanks. Thank you so much. And uh, we are so excited to have you all with us. And uh, uh, startups will present in a second. I just have a very quick announcement that uh, Guillermo will have to jump off in an hour. And uh, so uh, uh, we respect that. And if you would have to, just uh, don't forget to close your, uh, give give your final statement to the people with your, some final recommendations if you get a, a chance, of course. And yeah, with that said, let's get started. The first presenter will be Neil Takar. Neil, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, you got two minutes for your elevator pitch. Awesome. All righty, I'm ready to go. So, so I want you to think of a computer, right? Now imagine the hardware is completely antiquated, but the software is brand new. You know, 2023 versus the hardware is a 1990. Is the computer gonna work properly? Absolutely not. And yet we understand this paradigm from the technology standpoint, but from the personal development industry, from the, the fitness industry, from the behavioral health market, we don't apply this same framework to human transformation. And what I mean is that people are all focusing on the mind, which is the software, but nobody is focused on the brain. But when your brain is working against you instead of for you, transformation is impossible. And that's the problem that we are here to solve. I'm Neil, founder and CEO of Evolve Air. And we are raising $3.2 million for our brain health centered startup, Evolve Air. Evolve Air is a CPG company that offers supplements and functional foods, a coaching company that offers brain performance coaching. And eventually we're going to be offering customized uh, consumer product good solutions to our customers. Currently, we have five SKUs on the market, five supplements. At the end of this year, we're going to release functional foods to the market. Um, and this year, we're also releasing our Neural Evolution Coaching Program. In regards to traction, we have done close to 5 million in lifetime sales with 800% growth the last three years. We did close to 2 million in sales last year. We're on pace to doing 3.4 million in sales this year. In regards to our subscription revenue, we have 50K in MRR currently. 
on pace to having 80K in MRR by the end of this year. And averaged across our products, we have 80, uh, sorry, yeah, we have 80% gross margins. Um, that being said, we are now looking to bring on aligned investors to help people evolve their brains so that they can evolve their lives. Thank you. Right on time. Thank you so much, Neil. Now, dear Sharks, your questions. Are you in or out? <laughs> May I ask a question before deciding? Of course. Neil, thank you for the presentation. It was actually interesting. Um, I, I, I'm not going to go into the philosophical differences between mind and brain, but I do appreciate what you're trying to do. Uh, that is a conversation for another time. Um, you said that you had, uh, you've had sales uh, for five of five million but you have monthly recurring revenue of uh, 50 and hoping to get 80K. How long did it take you to get the 5 million and in which geographical area? Great question. So the 5 million was over the course of five years, but we did a million uh, three years ago. We did uh, 1.8 uh, two years ago. I'm sorry, 1.8 last year, a million the year before that, uh, and on pace to 3.4. So a large majority was the past couple of years and this year. About 3. Okay. 5, 3. 5 to four, uh, to around 3.7 the last this year, the year before, and the year before. Okay. And so, and you're looking for capital. Is, um, you're not able to um, bootstrap your way in? 3.2 million asks means that you have a really high valuation. What is your valuation right now? So we are at a 12.8 million valuation, free money. Okay. No, it's it, it's all very very interesting, but it is um it is above my usual ticket size and uh, and company size. Um, however, I will be following you. If you want to connect with me, I do have uh, other people that may be interesting to speak with. Well, let's consider this as a match, and we will connect you after the event. Thank you, Daniel. And Thank that, you so much. So one shark is in. Congrats. What about the rest of us? I think you did a phenomenal job with the with the pit with the um, elevator pitch. Um, I think you 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 know laid out a pretty compelling story. I think what would have been great to understand is a little bit more about what actually differentiates the product, right? And and why is this better than what exists out in the market from just a, a scientific standpoint? Um, I also feel like if you're able to share kind of you know, uh, I guess return customer rate or overall cart size and value just to get a sense of pricing that you're charging, that would also be helpful. Um, I do agree. I think valuation seems rich in this market, uh, but I think you have a really compelling story being, you know, even having recurring revenue as a CPG company this early is is compelling. Uh, we don't typically invest in the space. So for that reason, I'm unfortunately out, but uh, you did a really great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was a really great pitch, but I have concerns about the overall defensibility. Um, there doesn't seem to be any sort of un, uh, sustainable business competitive, uh, competitive advantage that I can see. So because of that, I think I'll be out. Thank you. And, and appreciate that. Yeah. And to piggyback off of AJ's points, uh, Neil, that was a absolutely great presentation. Unfortunately, it's outside of our scope of investments, outside of our target market. So for that, I am out too. All right, sure. everything. fantastic. So there is a uh, one match, and uh, I will be happy to uh, continue uh, and support. I mean, connect you after the event today and tomorrow. Uh, so Neil, please stay stay in the uh, in, here in the chat. Also, we have some investors here in the chat. Uh, if you can stay more and uh, support others, and uh, thank you for your pitch. Now, thank you so much. We are moving to the next person, um, and the next person is uh, Elena Brand from Bisampo. Elena, you ready? Yes. Hi. You got two minutes. Go for it. Sure. Thank you. The uh, sample is uh, solving a decades long problem in behavioral and social research. And the problem is that almost all available research populations are weird, as in Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic, or simply speaking, American. So when researchers think that they know any truth about humans, they in fact know it about Americans or even worse so American college students. This is not right, not only for the academia, but also for the government and industry to inform policies, to inform um, selling strategies and so on. So B sample is building uh, a platform for uh, where it gives researchers access to global populations from 42 countries. That's what we now have on the platform. 
uh, and uh, its mission is to democratize access to global populations in countries of Africa, Asia, Latin America, and Eastern Europe. Right now, we have a functional MVP. Uh, we're at very early stage. We only launched four months ago, so we have uh, 43 happy customers who are paying, generating revenue, uh, and we're looking to raise investment to help us boost the process that we're already on, uh, is extending the uh, own crowd of respondents that we have uh, all over the globe. So that's it. Fantastic. Your, your, your questions. So, so are you just doing uh, population sampling, basically, and then selling it to researchers? That is right. So we sell access to those uh, respondents. So we don't collect data from them. We sell access to them so that the researchers can collect whatever data they need to uh, service, experiments, behavioral games, any type of data collection they do, whichever is doable online. Okay. And how much have you raised so far and how much are you trying to raise right now? So we have raised 150K in family and friends funds so far. Uh, we're looking to raise uh, from 500 to a million dollars in pre-seed funds. Uh, Closer to next year. And so, what will these? What will that funding allow you to do? So we are patenting the algorithm because we have multiple sources of this crowd, and uh, the algorithm that uh, kind of packs the researchers' request into uh, targetable, you know, um, kind of targetable, deliverable uh, requests to multiple sources of respondents. And then we're also building an AI-based uh, respondent assessment um, algorithm because uh, uh, quality is very important. Right now, there is arguably no solution that has quality global crowd, especially targeted at researchers, because a lot of it is bot scams, you know, people who don't pay attention. So this is the major problem that we're also dealing with. And how much are you going to be charging for access? So it's per... Uh, payout. So we charge fee for on top of whatever researchers pay to the respondents. Right now it's a 30% fee. Okay. We need to think about this one for a little bit. Okay. One shark is thinking. <laughs> it's a third. <laughs> uh, one thing I'll say is uh, it's it's a little too early for us, but in, in your elevator pitch, because of how early you are, It'd be really helpful to clearly kind of identify who the target customer is, right? Who's the buyer? How do they typically transact with this, right? How is it going to be easier through you for them to reach this wider scale? Paint a little bit about what the product's going to look like. And then importantly, what the business model is going to be, right? Those things, I think, really help set a framework for how you're thinking about tackling this market. That because you had the time, I would incorporate those elements and mm -hmm. be a little bit clearer about what the target is for the pitch, right? If you're looking for funding, have a number in mind that you do share, because for a lot of investors, it'll just allow them to now think, okay, is this typically a check size that I am involved in, or is it early or is it late? So those are things that I just incorporate to make the pitch tighter. Uh, but other than that, I think it's a really you know admirable problem you're trying to solve for. I definitely can see that this pain point exists. Um, and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the feedback. Very helpful. I think I think also a little too early on for us, and again, outside of our target, um, a little too niche of a market to go after, especially for for all of our, our value proposition. So for that, I'm also out too. But thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, Elena, the, I'm, I'm, it's out of my of my um, sectors as well. However, I I would like to ask you a question that I think you would be asked many times when you encounter investors, which is how do you add value that is not currently added by um, AI? And and just think about everything that needs to be done better so that you will not be swept up by a good um, a good AI application that might just uh, swallow you up. You don't have to answer now. Just think okay. about it. And, and yeah, yeah, it's just something that is coming up more and more in your sector. So you may want to keep an eye out on that. And do you mean just just to clarify? You mean AI replacing which AI program? doing a lot of the sorting that you're trying to do right now? There are a number of startups using AI to um, make huge data sortable, decidable, and accessible. So there is a lot. It's not a blue ocean. So you want to make sure that you stand out in some way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So um, 
If any of the sharks would be interested, Elena, uh, we will definitely connect you. And uh, great pitch, so great and uh, great feedback. And uh, actually, uh, the feedback about precise uh, number—it's uh, uh, a common uh, a common mistake of founders. So uh, it's not only for Elena, but for everyone. Uh, please make sure to have the exact number you're raising, so it actually makes you a like conf more confident founder. And it's it's okay that we are making mistakes. I've done these mistakes also, so it's normal. But uh, keep working, and this feedback is also intense to help you. So thank you for that. And please, everyone who is right now on the, the pitch, uh, also please share the screenshots of our event on social media. So we are here. Let's make some publicity about that and about your participation as well on LinkedIn, Twitter, and everywhere. And uh, Elena, if you can stay, support others, and we are moving on. And the, the next person is, let me see my notes, what my team just gave me, uh, Karin Vargas. Karin, are you ready? I am. All right, go yeah. for it. Two minutes. Awesome. I'm Karin Vargas, and I am a former actuary turned speech language pathologist and the founder of Smart Charts. I'm a clinician, a patient, and a family member to a mother who suffered a stroke and a brother who recently underwent a traumatic brain injury. As patients and family members, we naturally think when these things happen, what does this mean for the rest of our lives? And as a clinician, I can tell you the answer to this question solely depends on completing rehab therapies. But the crazy thing is only one in 10 of us actually finish our full course of physical speech and or occupational therapy. Why? because we simply don't understand why we should. You see, the problem is electronic health records were never designed for patients, but rather for billing. Smart Charts solves this problem. It takes electronic health record progress notes and turns them into patient accessible pictures. You can think Apple Fit or Fitbit for rehabilitation, where we provide information on progress to patients in accessible visuals, regardless of age, diagnosis, SES, native language, and even education. In 2020, we launched our MVP version, and we've had over 650 clinicians on our platform. Last year, the U.S. spent over $550 billion in rehabilitation, and this market supports babies and to seniors and is expected to grow by 17% in four years. Our clinicians cut communication times in half and increased attendance rates for their patients. Later this year, we're looking to release our beta product, and our goal is to be the Google Analytics of rehabilitation, providing personal insights using machine learning to eliminate the uncertainty that comes with diagnosis or recovery. Our business model is B2Me, charging um, a SaaS subscription model per clinician per month, and in the future, we'll have a per payer option for subscriptions as well. Earlier this week, we actually closed a 250 or sorry, a $25,000 pilot, and we have 1.3 million in pipeline opportunities. We're looking to raise 900K for pre seed um, to increase our team size, product security, and offerings. And we hope that you can help us create a world where we all get better faster. Right on time. Thank you. Yes, Sharks, your questions. Um... <clears throat> I'm in. I, I want to see a pitch deck so I can do a little bit more research into it, but it's a really big market that um, I know is ripe for disruption. Same here, too. Um, a little early on for us right now, uh, but I think it would make sense to take a look at the deck and then maybe schedule a call outside of this and then maybe strategize to have further conversations as time goes by and you launch the beta and start acquiring more customers. But for that, I'm I'm in for right now. Fantastic. So two sharks are in. We'll connect you, of course. What about the rest? I, I won't make it three just because it's not a space we invest in, but uh, I think you did a really good job with the pitch. Um, one thing is, you know, it, it, you're aware of this. It's a really crowded market, right, to try to get folks into rehab and, and get adhered to some, some type of plan. And software has been tried before. So just for the benefit of, you know, an investor audience, it'd be great if you could sprinkle in why your go-to-market or approach is differentiated from the competition that's tried before. Because otherwise, if I'm, you know, in this space, just my fatigue of looking at technology that might solve this problem might lead me to just pattern match and say, this isn't a fit for me. But if you have that concern early on, then I'm even more compelled to want to learn more. So just maybe for the next one. Thank you so well much. Well done, Corinne. I think I think you did a good job with the pitch. Um, 
I saw that you were reading. I'm not a big fan of reading, but that's okay. There was a lot of information, so that's fine. Um, it is um, it is something that um, I am interested in, so I'd like to receive your feedback as well and have a further conversation. Congratulations. Three sharks in almost jackpot. So, yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Karine. And uh, uh, with that said, we're moving on. Please stay, stay in the chat here and uh, uh, support others. And the next person uh, to present is uh, William Wall. William, uh, are you ready? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Volpe. Actually, I'm William H. Volpe III. Okay. I am the founder of the Volpe Consortium. Our key brand is Project Victories. And I'm not here looking for money. And we're not here for a startup, okay? Um, I'm actually here to protect your money. Um, we are a project management and business analysis corporation, okay? I've sat in on many of these meetings, and I hear lots of great ideas, and I hear investors. Um, but what most people end up lacking is execution, okay? Uh, I've got over 34 years of experience in this field. Uh, my core team has got a combined experience level of over 100 years. I was a master business analyst at Hewlett Packard and the project management office manager for the Ministry of Interior of Saudi Arabia. Uh, William, I have, a I have a question to you. Are you raising capital or not? Because this event for raising capital. I'm not raising capital. What's the purpose I'm of pitching more services. Ah, okay. but we're not offering services here. We are, we, are, we are pitching to investors to raise capital. This is the the place where to pitch. Are you? If you're not doing that, eighty billion dollars a year is lost every year on challenged and failed projects just in America and the IT industry alone. Okay. Now, with, if you yeah, don't want to help on that, with, with all respect, we have so many people pitching to investors raising capital. I just, I, I mean, I admire what you do. There is nothing wrong with that. But this is exactly when startups are pitching to investors and uh, you're not raising so probably we, we, we please stay with us here in the chat but we will let others to pitch is it okay with you uh, i don't see any reason for me to stay on with the chat okay thank you uh, thank you uh, thank you for that uh, anyway appreciate your uh, attempt to, to pitch but this is the exactly the pitch event for startups to pitch and uh, the next person is pitching andrew andrew are you ready andrew Yep. Oh, sorry. Uh, just give me one sec. My video isn't turning on. Can All you right. see me? You got two minutes. Go for it. All righty. So at Coinos Group, we help indie devs bypass gatekeepers and generate more revenue sooner by monetizing directly through Web3. But first, we need to take a step back and ask, uh, if you think that the internet would have taken off if you had to pay even just one penny every time you visited a website. Well, that's this, the situation actually way worse for game developers who are looking to leverage Web3, who either have to eat blockchain fees or push the fee onto their users. So simply put, it's just too expensive and risky to build on blockchains, and it's just not scalable for that reason. So we built Coinos, the first and only free to use blockchain, thanks to its coin token. Uh, that's coin with a K, which allows game developers to give players free usage of the blockchain based on how many tokens the developers hold. So it's simple. Nobody has to pay the fee because there actually isn't a fee. So Coinos is super accessible and it immediately cuts the cost uh, for game developers. But that's only if it's easy to integrate, which is the problem that our SaaS platform Coinos Pro solves. And the MVP of our SaaS platform is already out, and we have about 100 uh, users of the SaaS platform. So as an example, uh, Splinterlands is one of the biggest Web3 dApps with 200,000 monthly active users. And they've partnered with us because they want to grow even more while spending less and running less infrastructure. So the Coinos blockchain makes it frictionless and free to onboard an unlimited number of users while Coinos Pro gives them the tooling, the infrastructure, and the network resources that they'll need to support that growth through a subscription plan with paid tiers. So Coinos Mainnet went live in November um, of 2022. Seven million blocks have been produced on our blockchain, 60,000 transactions, 
about 60 validators are running the chain and the token is listed on a centralized exchange. We have 20 dApps running on mainnet and we're in the process of launching a marketing campaign that will onboard 20 dApps and 100,000 users in six months. Uh, before starting this company, we built the Steam blockchain and Steemit.com into the most used dApp in the world uh, with 2 million users. Uh, and uh, right now we're raising 500,000 at a 12 million post money cap to launch the paid tiers of our SaaS platform, Coinos Pro, and achieve our objective of onboarding uh, 100,000 users in six months. So that's us, that's Coinos Group. Awesome, thank you so much. Yes, Sharks, your questions. I think I can, I'll kick this one off really quickly. Andrew, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, before the call, we, we were actually chatting a little bit. I, myself, am a huge gamer, so very interested in the space within itself. Um, I think it would make sense for us to carry a conversation after this. Our fund, we not only bring capital to the table, we also um, do diligence deeply into email marketing within itself. And I know you just mentioned you're, you're launching a campaign and you're diving a little bit deeper in there. So would be interested to have a conversation, take a look at our database and figure out exactly how many people we can reach out to and maybe see if we could find potential synergies there. So for that, I'd like to have another conversation. On Shark is in, congratulations. Sounds great. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Sounds great. What about the rest? Are you guys interested? Have questions? Um, I, I know it, it's not my space. Yeah, it, it sounds like an interesting opportunity, but it's not my space. Good luck. AJ, yes, yeah, I appreciate it. That sounds like uh, sounds like you made some great progress, um, and it's really exciting that you have a pretty major partnership. Um, congrats on on all of it, and best of luck as you take it forward. So thank you so much, uh, Andrew. Uh, please uh, sh share your contact details or full name because uh, otherwise we won't find you to connect you with uh, Guillermo. So send it to me and uh, everyone, please use your full first name and last name. Otherwise, if we try to connect you, we may not find you in the database and you will not get a connection. So make sure you have the full name uh, on your Zoom. Uh, thank you, Andrew. I'll be moving on to the next uh, presenter who is Nathan Deutsch. Uh, uh, Nathan, are you ready? I'm ready. Hi, thanks. Go for it. Hi. So I'm Nathan. I'm co-founder and COO of a Swiss startup, Lighthouse Tech. Smart eyewear uh, has come a long way, and the next de decade will definitely be a, a game changer for this wearable form factor. Smart glasses can enhance your experience in the world. But for many, the question is how this tech can enable them to get outside accomplish mobility tasks safely, and increase their sense of well-being. Lighthouse Tech makes the, a first-of-its-kind intelligent eyewear device for blind and vision-impaired people. Our wearable analyzes dangers in the user, user's path, and it complements traditional and smart assistive technologies to help with challenging orientation and navigation tasks using non-visual haptic feedback so users can walk freely and unencumbered. Our team brings together 90 years of optical industry and engineering experience, low power design, mechanical integration. We've worked with top tech companies and fashion eyewear makers. This is critical for our B2B business model because we want to start license, licensing our tech in our third year. Our market is around 80 million blind people as people, uh, as severely impaired and blind people. And we have traction from four national blind associations. We've had our prototype tried by over 400 people, and we've just begun tests in partner with blind associations and a neurorehabilitation re uh, clinic in Switzerland uh, for people who've suffered stroke and brain injury. So we're opening up to new areas where perception is the issue more than vision. Uh, more than vision. Um, we have four LOIs so far uh, in a distribution agreement signed with assistive medical device distributors and blind associations. So far this year in 2023, we're a winner of a 120K Toyota Mobility Foundation grant to develop our technology, a wearable tech innovation award in Europe, top Swiss startup contest, and we're in Mass Challenge USA. Right now, we're looking for 500K to get us through pre-production and get in the market. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, yes, Sharks, do you have any questions? 
Yes, I think I need to start this since geographically it's my area, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Nathan, thank you for that. It, it's uh, I, I'm not sure I understand. Is this a pair of glasses that help people who cannot see? So blind people wear glasses. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, so it's a it's the our IP is actually in the modular design, but we make the full eyewear frame which we can sell B2B, so through associations, blind associations that often sell to their uh, uh, members directly uh, or low vision uh, distributors. And in addition, I mentioned uh, we will license uh, this modular design uh, to eyewear companies looking also for uh, a social impact uh, with, with their markets. Okay, um, I, I'd, like to, I, I'd like to keep following them. I've been, I've been following Lighthouse for a while. I've actually invited them to come and pitch because I think that uh, it is a worthwhile and impactful technology. So well done. We'll, we'll stay in touch. Congratulations. And I'm glad it's in much. Switzerland. So you actually can potentially uh, make, uh, meet in, uh, face to face. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. What about the rest of the sharks? I really like this technology and I like all the possibilities. However, um, a company similar to this just got rejected uh, the ICE investment committee uh, like four or five months ago. So I don't think uh, it would have a chance at passing. Um, so because of that, I think I'm going to be unfortunately and reluctantly pass at this time. Thank you. Man. Yeah, Nate, Nathan, absolutely love what you're doing. I think it's completely life changing, but, you know, outside of our scope, not really familiar in the space. So for that, I'm out as well. But Keep continuing what you're doing. Keep crushing. Love to see it. All right. Thank you. So much. Hey, yeah, likewise. Uh, you know, a little bit outside our sweet spot, but uh, I really like the the business model and approach. I think going after um, you know the the B two B market and enabling licensing of your core technology, I think, is the way to get to scale. So, best of luck. Uh, you know, hopefully, you can you can make this pretty terrible affliction a thing of the past. So, kudos to you. Thank you so much. Thanks uh, all. We will connect you with Angelica. Please stay till the, till the end if you can. And uh, of course, support us on social media. And we're moving on uh, to the next presenter. That is Vin Hao Yang. Uh, Vin Hao, are you ready? Vin Hao Yang. If I pronounce something incorrectly, I'm very sorry in advance. Vin Hao Yang, are you ready to turn on your mic? Okay, uh, probably we'll get give a chance even how to pitch later. Dan Marsh, are you ready? I am ready. Okay, you got two minutes. Go for it. My name is Dan Marsh. I'm the CEO and inventor at uh, Pirate Wind Turbines. We have developed some self-regulating small wind turbine technology that's going to be for the market between 200 watts and so far 10,000 watts, even though I think it can go on larger units. Uh, I've been uh, working with renewable energies about 30 years. And the reason that I built uh, this new technology is because I did not like any of the existing technology even today. Uh, if anybody's had any experience with small wind turbines, they are noisy, they vibrate, and most of them don't perform to the specs that they write themselves. Uh, so we, are, we uh, actually regulate the voltage at the turbine in high winds. So we're going to we're going to perform better in low winds because we can put bigger blades on, but we're going to perform spectacularly in high winds when probably every other small wind turbine in the world wants you to turn them off or wants you to put the brakes on. The they had their special electronic brakes to have them slow down. There's other ways to slow down turbines which they all need to do and that's uh they have blade furling which is they bend the blades and when that happens it's noisy and it vibrates it's crazy. Uh, our company, I've been working on this two years. I've got uh, two years of testing personally, up to 75 miles an hour. We've tested it professionally at an energy and propulsion lab here in San Antonio, Texas, USA. And we are looking to raise $500,000. This is going to be to get some models out in, in the field, some prototypes, uh, to uh, 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 gather all the data from those prototypes and get it on the market. So. Uh, I have a question for the uh, uh, investors, and that is when you're looking for money, do you ask for it all up front or do you do it in smaller batches uh, as technology advances? Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, dear Sharks, uh, your questions. I can take a stab at your question and then I'll have a question of my own. Um, I think I think the answer is it depends on, on your stage. Um, I think for the quantum of capital you're raising, it's good to outline the goal, right? Uh, but depending on who you're speaking to, you can also outline what the minimum check size is. So if you're talking about, you know, an angel, you can say, look, the minimum that we're starting with is 10,000. Our goal is to get up to 500,000 and whatever you're comfortable with, you know, that's that's kind of the, that, that that's fair game. And we won't collect it until we reach our goal or whatever that might be. Right. So that's a way to approach it at an earlier stage. If you're if you're raising a quantum of capital of like three plus million or you know, even one plus million, I think just state state the whole goal. And hopefully you're talking to people who can take down a con, uh, considerable chunk of that. So hopefully that helps um, as technology evolves. I don't think it really matters in terms of how, the quantum of capital to raise. I think it's more about the stage of company that you're at. Uh, the other piece is um, it'd be great, you know, you know, with with something that is a considerable piece of hardware to at least have a sense of what it looks like. You can't always do that if you're, especially if you're in person, but I think with a virtual elevator pitch, just having even your background, right. Being the, the wind turbine that we're talking about, I think could, could help connect a bunch of dots. You mentioned kind of 200 to 10,000 Watts, right? So what is really the business model that you're going after? Are you selling direct to consumer? Are you targeting small, small businesses, small municipalities, where are you really trying to go with the product? I think would be helpful. And then some information just because of the hardware pieces around scalability, you know, fully loaded bomb of what it, what it costs to actually manufacture, what you think that becomes at scale. Some of those metrics become really important to an investor that typically might opt for software over hardware because of the scalability. So hopefully that's helpful. A um, little bit early for us to get involved, uh, but, but best of luck. Uh, it's very helpful. Thank you very much. And my pitch deck does address all those things, but here uh, I have two minutes. Um, but I, I do want to take just uh, another 15 seconds to address Angelica when she introduced herself today about uh, investing in things that uh, change the world. Uh, our product, I believe, is going to be the only one in the world that can go directly from the turbine to a DC water well pump. So this is going to help out a lot of villages uh, in Africa that use uh, current solar technology. And we all know solar doesn't work at, at night. So uh, we have a lot of applications that uh, I, as far as the patent searches and stuff, we are patent pending. Uh, uh, we're uh, we're way ahead of the game in, in in developing something totally brand new. And thank you. Thank you. Dan, to to to, to mention my name, I, I feel like I should answer. First of all, thank you for your pitch. It is a technology that potentially it is a piece of hardware that can potentially make a big difference, especially in some um, less served areas. I am involved with a couple of projects in Rwanda and I will actually be there in October. So if you would like to send me your pitch deck, I will see if, if I can if I can get something going for you there. Um, I think that in Switzerland is not the right place for a number of reasons, the regulations and other things, but I'll be happy to give you a hand in other ways if I can. Thank you very much. So just to clarify, uh, do I connect you, Angelica? Uh, yes, please. Yes, please, Dano. Sorry, I didn't mention that yet. All right. So Angelica is in. Uh, you, AJ, you're not in yet. Uh, okay. Just Angelica. Okay. I can, One second. I can jump in really quickly. Dan, thank you so much for the presentation. We've actually trialed our email marketing campaigns in the re renewable energy space. We haven't been able to find any success to date just because the limited context that we have within our own database, not to say that it's a niche audience within itself, but for us, we just haven't developed a database where we can provide value to businesses in that space. So for that, I'm out for, for now. Who knows? Things may change in the future and we may expand our scope there, but for right now, we, we just can't do it. Well, thank you for listening to me. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much. Uh, and my yeah. team, I'm already doing a little bit of light dude due diligence on the company. I, I like the potential. I like the idea. I'm not going to lie. I think it's probably a little bit too early for us, but you know, I like everything about it so far. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Dan, for your presentation. Please stay in the chat to support others. Uh, and everyone, please raise your hand to pitch if you plan to pitch, because sometimes you're texting in the chat and uh, asking when you pitch, but you didn't raise your hand and it just doesn't work like this. So please raise your hand. That will help us to identify who is pitching. And um, uh, probably uh, before Guillermo la leaves uh, us, we will take one more startup. And Guillermo, we hope you would have us uh, final words to say uh, to everyone. Um, and the next person to present is uh, Marcus Finlay. Marcus, are you there? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You got two minutes. Please start. 
All right, thank you. Uh, I'm Marcus Finley. I have over eight years uh, as an agency owner working with companies building software and AI solutions, hoping to raise over $15 million, as well as serving as CTO for two venture-backed startups. Uh, what I've set out to do is to solve the problem for small and medium-sized businesses with one addressing repetitive tasks, and then trying to figure out this whole AI space, uh, knowing they have limited capacity, technology skills, or the even understanding of the infrastructure to manage AI. Uh, so we want to save businesses millions of times of repetitive tasks. We've already started our first pilot with our solution called Shared Notes that helps them to uh, develop a co-working solution with AI uh, that's trained on specific skills that are the, the ones that small and medium-sized businesses need from sales, operations, and um, HR. We've also, for our go-to-market, we've already developed a community of 500 people, even in the short two months that we've been in development. Uh, we've been nurturing this community of already 500 people, training them and helping them understand the process of AI adoption and incorporation. And then we're starting to develop our plugins for Salesforce, HubSpot, and go to, go to high or go high level. Uh, as we know, those communities already have paying customers and they will be our target market as we're looking to integrate the solution. Uh, our, what makes us stand apart? Being agnostic, so being able to take on both open source AI solutions as well as the open AI solutions that are out there. And uh, and so with that, we're looking to raise 425,000. Uh, obviously the help fund the completion of the product and our integrations with the leading CRMs. And I'll see with the speed of AI, we want to be able to move quickly as possible uh, to get as much of our addressable market as quickly as possible. Uh, uh, open for questions. Thank you, right on time. Uh, dear Charles, you have any questions? I think I can kick the floor off here really quickly. Seems interesting just because our focus is also in the SMBs. That's where we, we feel we have a large target audience. That's where our contact base is made up the most of. Now, little too early stage for us. That's not to say that I'm not open to keeping the conversation alive, especially with these new companies that you're bringing on board. It is interesting to us to at least hold a conversation, build the connection, and then later on in the year, or even early on next year, figure out if there's a way for us to kick this thing into the next gear and figure out if there's a way for us to continue working together. So for that, I would be interested in, in having a connection at this time. Fantastic. One shark is in. Congratulations. I'm out. And Matthew is out. Uh, what about AJ and Angelic? Are you guys out? I, I'm unfortunately out as well. We just don't target SMBs with our platform. It's largely these these big scale enterprises. But best of luck as you begin to take this off, and um, hopefully I'll see you next year. Um, I'm out too, Mark. As well done. It, it, it's an interesting pro product. It's just out of my range of interest. But uh, I look forward to hearing what you have to what, what you will do in the future. Good luck. Thank you so much. Uh, so once Shark is in, uh, we'll connect with Guillermo after the event today or tomorrow. Uh, please share, Marcus, and everyone who has pitched and will be pitching, please share your uh, GGW profiles here in the chat so you can connect faster with investors and between each other. So that's uh, you achieve your connection goal even sooner. So don't forget to doing that. So thank you, Marcus. And um, uh, uh, we are moving on, and Guillermo is going to leave us uh, in about a minute or so. Guillermo, please give us your final word of wisdom, what you have in your heart, maybe some feedback to startups overall, what you uh, so far have in your mind. Yeah, everyone, thank you so much for having me today. Again, so sorry I have to jump early. Some last minute things popped up that I found out of midway through the week after I had agreed to be here. So for that, I do apologize. This is my first time being here. We'll look to be back next week or, you know, when the next time this is hosted, I had a ton of fun. Really excited to connect with all of you, learn more, get connected with the startups that I got a chance to learn about and, you know, obviously saw interest in. For those that I did not see interest in, would still love to connect. You know, maybe things change down the line and we can build a relationship going forward. Even though we're not a match now, it doesn't hurt to build a relationship and, you know, open doors for each other down the road. So I, even though I may not be a direct fit, I might know someone who is. So happy to connect with everybody. And again, thank you so much for, for having me. And again, so sorry that I have to jump, but uh, I will be seeing everyone again very soon. Thank you, Gilmero. Great to have you. And we definitely look forward to see you again and uh, be in touch. Uh, we'll definitely invite you again. Share your contacts if you want to and have a great the rest of the day.
I'll drop my LinkedIn again for everybody. I did earlier, but I'll do it again right now. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Take care. And uh, uh, again, let's try Vinhao Yang. Vinhao, uh, it's a final call for you. Uh, I, uh, are you there? Please turn your uh, microphone if you are here. The will let you pitch. Vinhao? Okay, so probably next time we will let Vinhao to pitch. And uh, right now, uh, the next person is Anurang Kamal. Anurang, are you ready? Yep. Okay, so you got two minutes, you might start. Our electricity grid is super old. It was built 100 years before to generate energy using fossil fuels and send it all the way across our homes to consume. Now, there are three key forces which are trying to break it down. Electric vehicles draw 100 times of more energy than an individual home. They have decarbonization of our energy generation, like wind and solar, which is only available during certain times of the day. And climate change is breaking pieces of the grid apart. Um, and Rob Kamal, and at Electric Fish, we are building a new generation of electricity grid. It starts from building decentralized energy storage devices, small batteries, which are integrated with extreme fast vehicle chargers, but only draw a little power from the electricity grid. Using careful optimization of when exactly we store energy, uh, we are able to decarbonize, uh, help, help the electricity grid decarbonize while delivering up to 200 miles of range to cars in just 10 minutes of charging. We have three patterns. Uh, our products can be deployed in just two weeks as compared to two years, which it takes for a physical uh, extreme fast vehicle charger to be deployed. And we are able to cut down the ROI, a return of investment of decentralized batteries by up to three times, getting returns in just two years by carefully managing our assets. Uh, we have our products operating in three US states, California, Michigan, and New York. And we currently have a partnership with Kia US in which we are doing a deployment with one of their car dealerships. The long-term vision is to deploy these products as a network at convenience stores and gas stations, and also with municipalities and cities. Currently raising uh, uh, pre Series A, uh, somewhere between a seed and Series A, uh, looking at a 2.5 million lead check size and 500,000 in follow on commitments uh, to first build up our manufacturing facility in Northern California and then scale our product and offer it through a monthly leasing model to cities and municipalities. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Sharks. Do you have any questions? Very interesting. So where, where I, I, I might've missed this, but where are you in kind of the commercialization journey? So in terms of actually having any of these built that folks are actively testing or, or paying for, where are you in that process? Uh, so Los Angeles, Detroit, um, were the two deployments, which we were live for up to six months. And currently we are live in Brooklyn. Uh, we are uh, offering public charging sessions and also backup energy to a national park service site. Uh, it's called the Floyd Bennett Field. So when the power goes out, we keep the lights on for up to 40 hours and are able to do up to 15 fast charging sessions every day. Currently. Really interesting. We it's probably early for us, but um, you know, would love to connect with you after and learn a little bit more about what you're building. Congrats. Great. Then congratulations. What about Angelica and Matthew? Are you guys interested to connect? I I'm out. It just doesn't. Do anything for me sorry it's okay she's um it is not my space and the tech site is a bit big for a business angel but good luck it is it sounds like a worthwhile adventure to be on thank you so much yeah. it was fast and efficient great presentation and uh please share your startup profile ggw profile we're moving on and uh, um the next person to present is uh Park. Fernstein, if I pronounce names incorrectly, I'm sorry for that. Buck Fernstein, are you ready? I am ready. You did great with that pronunciation. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you got two minutes. Go for it. All right. Uh, I'm Buck Fernstein. I am the founder of Guru. And I got into this because I do applications for Schwartz and Scholars. If you guys know Schwartz and Scholars, it's an unparalleled graduate fellowship. So it's the most important one possibly in the world. And so when I think of kids, number one thing for brain development for all kids, if they want to become uh, someone who gets into a place like Schwartz and Scholars is face-to-face -face communication. And right now, all the kids don't have face-to-face -face communication when they're pushed in a forward-facing stroller. 
So my first patents are mirrors on the stroller so parents can stay connected with their kids and some technology that we're gonna add to the stroller as well. Uh, I use mirrors uh, on strollers with my kids and now they test in the top 1% nationally. I know we've got some international people here, so I don't know where they are there, but nationally, and you can tell just talking to me, I'm not that bright. So I don't know where that comes from, but we want all the people to connect with their kids so they can raise their potential. Uh, and we're also building this AI marketplace where we can keep getting those kids more gifts that are good for uh, their development. And uh, we're going to be doing manufacturing, marketing, and doing our raise very soon. Our branding is done by the top uh, juvenile branding place here in New England. And happy to connect with anyone here. Uh, and that's that's the pitch. 1.8 million, and off we go. Perfect. Dear Sharks, your questions. So I might have missed it, but what is the, the product is a mirror? Yeah, that's exactly my question. Thank you. <laughs> I, I almost did this because I was listening and for visual learners and I'm a I'm a visual learner. And so when I was looking at what should I do for the background, uh, I've got a background that shows the actual product and it, it looks like this on a virtual product. It's very public. And so uh, that that's it. I can't actually do a virtual background now, but it's. Uh, a mirror that goes on the strollers that parents can look down, see the kid, the kid sees the parent, and uh, it has anti-glare technology because if we burn uh, one baby because of the sunlight bouncing off the mirror, the game's over. So it took a long time to develop this particular special mirror to put on the strollers, uh, but it's now ready. So we're going to raise to, to go to manufacturing. And we're putting it in, in the highest end stores in North America, which are in like Beverly Hills and uh, Back Bay and uh, in Boston, Michigan Avenue, places like that. It's really far from like our thesis, so like I think I think I'm out. But what one thing that would be great to mention is if if that is the product, right? What is the differentiation around me just clipping a handheld mirror to the end of my stroller, right? And like where you think this ultimately goes? I believe your thesis, right? That connecting with your children at a very early age throughout the day leads to better results. But what is a way to develop, you know, a product that is like others can't replicate drives additional value and uh you know sell me more that this nobody else can do what you're doing right i guess would be my thesis that's great feedback thank you thank you what about Mate angelica um i was just asking whether you you have you've had some traction of course yeah we sold out the the MVP came out of the Harvard I Lab. It took many years to develop with industry, wasn't getting it done. Went to the Harvard I Lab, got it done, uh, and now we're actually over there in Europe. Uh, we did the DFM in Europe, and we're going to be doing the manufacturing. Uh, we've got it set up, um, exploring exactly where we're going to start manufacturing this, uh, possibly in the U.S., possibly in China. Uh, that's the moment. Okay. This is a, a, it's a bit early. Also, I'd like to see a little bit more traction usually before um, I get into something like this. It is interesting. Um, I like the fact that you have an interesting storytelling going behind a mirror. So we all were really worried, you know, wondering what was going on. So well done on that. You created a sort of expectation, but unfortunately, I'm out. Good luck, though. Thank you. Yeah, the storytelling was phenomenal and you really kind of shaped everything really, really well. Um, <clears throat> the problem is it's not very defensible from my point of view. Uh, um, I think even with a patent, um, people are just going to clip a mirror onto their strollers and, you know, you have to go to court to defend your patent and stuff like that. And it just becomes something that a um startup really can't afford um so kind of for those reasons i'm out right. i do like what you're doing thank you I matt even your thesis thank you i no, so appreciate, appreciate that and if if we all of a sudden start seeing mirrors on every stroller in the world i'm going to be a happy man because i think it's just an important thing to happen and the way we're going to be defending ours is we've uh, got an loi with specific high-end boutiques and those boutiques are like a club and they're not really very easy to get into. It took me a few years to get into them. But other than that, we want to see mirrors everywhere. Thank you, Pak. I love your energy. Great, great job with that. And the way you talk, I mean, the real founder, like trying to use every single opportunity. Great job. And everyone just try to actually 
put as much energy as you can. So Pak was doing this uh, great. So uh, stay till the end and also support others, share your GGW profile here. So maybe you connect with other investors uh, on the chat in here. And uh, the next person to present is Abina C. So everyone who is pitching or you want to pitch, please use your real first name, real last name. Otherwise, we will not, never connect you with an investor. Just be aware of that. Abina C, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay, we may start. Uh, please turn on your video. Yes. Okay, you got yeah, it. Thank you. Go for it. Yes, my name is Obinna Chinenye Ibemero Kenze. I am the founder of Ofonogu Assets Limited. Ofonogu is designing a blockchain that is focused 100% on real estate development. Our flagship product is currently the 2,000 hectares of land that is mapped out for free international zone, trade zone in Nigeria, where one of four token is equal to one square meter of a land space within the free trade zone. Thank you. Oh, that's it. Okay. Uh, dear Sharks, uh, your questions. If any. Obina, I'd like to understand, and I think I understood something about blockchain, but it's really unclear to me what you're doing, what you need to move forward, what stage are you at, and uh, just in general, uh, how how you would use the fund. Just uh, you've been super succinct. We need to understand just a little bit more if we can help you. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, what we are doing is to design the infrastructure that will enable the complete trade, the supply chain, and the B2B marketplace that will govern the free trade zone that has already been mapped out. OK. Um, and the subsequent marketing and development of the actual trade areas within the zone. I will, I will get is, both. Is, uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's a worthwhile project, but it is not really a startup and it's super early. You're still designing things. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Abina. Uh, I think, uh, and thank you, Angelica. I think. Uh, if there is some recommendation might be so if you want to kind of uh, win in, uh, attention of investors you probably want to pitch uh, prepare your elevator pitch i will share in a second a video elevator pitch video so it can help you prepare for next time and uh, uh you probably a little early i'll give matthew and aj to give like a quick are you in or out and uh, we'll continue further thank you are you guys uh, in or out uh, I guess out, right? Yeah, no, it's a bit too early. It's, I think it's too theoretical right now. Okay, thank you. Avina, uh, thank you for your presentation and uh, I will share the link so you can prepare your elevator pitch for future events like that. Thank you very much. Okay, good luck. And the next person to present is uh, Joe Nicholson. Joe, are you ready? Yes, hi everybody. Can okay. you hear me okay? You can. Uh, you this is my first, first time here and I appreciate the chance to pitch. It's impossible to ignore the elephant in the room any longer. Climate change has become our climate crisis and it's getting worse. Eliminating the use of fossil fuels is critical to reaching cl our climate goals, making many of the products we use for construction today obsolete. I'm Joe Nicholson, Innovation Specialist and CEO at NX Pass. Maybe you've heard about how damaging the production of cement is to our planet. But did you know every year 20 billion square feet of asphalt roof shingles are used in, ash in US and Canada? And every year, 75% of the 40 billion tons of PVC we produce goes into building and construction. That equates to 300 million tons of emissions. Exasperating this huge problem is that by 2030, 3 billion more people will need housing. Recognizing that we purchase what we what benefits us, let me share you how we've applied a lifetime of construction experience and a passion for problem solving with the past six years to create a whole new material 
with big opportunities in a trillion dollar a year construction materials market. Our secret sauce is a resilient, cost-effective composite made with over 60% of its volume being upcycled waste and delivers new possibilities with insulation and carbonation while reducing weight, conserving resources, and lowering emissions. Trade named Elsamite, this is more than an equal re replacement for concrete in some applications and creates new possibilities for appealing concrete-like products in markets like roof, deck, siding, fence, landscape, and more. Our invention is spot on with a timely market fit. Climate goals, code bodies, insurance providers, and property owners are all actively seeking better options. We are a licensing entity seeking to partner with proven business leaders, with our first goal being to raise a million dollars to pilot this technology in a unique small space housing concept that would be resilient, shippable anywhere in the world, and expand to two and a half times the ship size with an easy site setup and that would be good for the planet. You can learn more at our website, nxcast.ca. Thanks. Thank you. Joe, yes, Sharks, your questions. So how much does this material take to, how much are you selling the material for? Uh, the material depends. It's not really designed to say replace concrete. So if you're going to compare it price-wise with concrete, it would be about three and a half times the price of concrete on an equal volume basis, but it does things that concrete does it, is unable to do. So for example, we can use it for roofing where it's we can cast it very thin. So it actually is about the weight of a heavy asphalt roof shingle and it can be power nailed on which you can't do with a concrete product. And what is this, you know, life expectancy versus, you know, concrete? Well, interesting, you should ask that because it's made with glass and cement, two of the most um, almost like value and performance um, back materials um, that, that we can use. So it, it, as as any cement product, it would last 50 to 100 years, but the glass part of it, I mean, glass lasts pretty much forever. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I understand that. I mean, the ancient Romans used to mix volcanic ash into their concrete, which is one of the reasons why it's, you know, lasted so long. So mixing glass into something like that very well could have a very similar effect. Yes. It took us six years to develop this material, and I have over 30 plus years in product development in the construction industry. So uh, this is not something that just happened overnight, but it's definitely needed in the marketplace out there. How much are you looking to raise right now? We're looking to raise a million dollars to because we want to pilot a small space housing concept using this material, and that uh, fun or those funds would be able to allow us to get grant funding from different government programs that fund decarbonization and and housing projects here in Canada. Okay, um, I'm in for right now. I, I know a little bit about this space. Okay. I'm. I'm I, I just I typically don't find venture capital to be a great source of capital for material use cases. So um, good luck to what you're doing. I think grants are the way to go. I agree with you, but I do need that that one accredited investor to free up or to unlock that grant, almost you could say that whole package of, of uh, grants. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm probably eventually going to say no, but at the same time, I do know that a lot of the partners here love the alternative building um, block material stuff. So it's always worth a extra look when you know the partners are kind of keen on something like that. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Joe, I I love what you're trying to do. I think it's it's incredibly important. And they do understand the need for a lead qualified investor to unlock capital. Um, it is um, it is not my space, so I will have to say no. 
if I can leave you a word of advice, would be to try and connect with um, some company, some building material company that may be on the brink of destruction and they may really want to have that secret sauce that may save them and bring them in as, um, as um, uh, a partner may be interesting at this stage. But good luck to you, really. It, okay. it, it, it's good stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And then moving on, Joe, please stay okay. till the end, support others, share your GGW profile, and we're moving on. The next person is Jack Fram. Jack, uh, are you ready? Yes, I am, Daniel. Hello, everybody. You got My name is here. Jack. Can you hear me? Yeah. I, I can't hear you now, but... Go for it. Uh, you got two minutes. Okay. Uh, this is Jack Fromm, and that is my real name. Um, I'm the founder of Planet Earth Car Wash and Planet Earth Wash Solutions. And uh, I'm sure that we're all aware of uh, climate change and what it's doing for water shortages around the world. It's hypercritical overseas and becoming critical here in the States. Um, and because my, my car wash um, is going to uh, be net zero water, um, because of the equipment we're utilizing, we have to be able to use safe, non-caustic, organic soaps and polishes in the tunnel. So we've developed Planet Earth Wash Solutions, which has, uh, is being developed in our Utah lab and it's patent pending right now. Um, we've had inquiries from other countries, water resource departments, uh, other industries like aeronautics and the military. And um, this um, is basically also solving two problems. Not only is it going to uh, make it so that other businesses around the world can recycle up to 100% of their water because it's a safe solution that feeds the microbots and doesn't kill them like chemicals they're using now that has hydrofluoric acids in it. But we're also solving the problem of the hydrofluoric acids and the chemicals that most people are using right now, um, which causes uh, skin burns, um, uh, lung diseases, um, which there's thousands of injuries every year because of the hydrofluoric acids and our products are going to get that out of the market and replace those unsafe chemicals and offer a safe solution for business owners and car wash owners. We are pursuing, a, we're in seed funding, we're looking for 100,000 to 250,000 dollars. The 250 will actually enable us to complete development and move on to the next stage, which will be for setting up our warehouse for mass production. Um, so we will, uh, you can contact me at pecwllc at gmail.com if you're interested. Um, anyone, if you'd like to send me an email with a, a letter of interest attached, that would be greatly appreciated. And uh, we thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jack. Uh, dear Sharks, your questions. Who wants to start? No, I guess no that's question. hard, guys. <laughs> what, one thing, Jack, I, I, uh, I like what you're doing. Um, it is interesting. It is worthwhile. I'm allergic to most soaps, so I do understand that there is a sensitization issue going on. I don't know to how many investors you've spoken with already, but I need to give you a little piece of advice. You do not ask for an investor to contact you with a letter of interest. Um, we, we don't do that. We are usually contacted um, with a letter of interest to speak to us. And, and we, it is it is that kind of conversation we receive tens and if not hundreds of pitches every every month. So if you need us as smart money or just money, do reach out yourself. Don't wait for people to contact you. That's my advice. Thank you, Angelica. Yeah, this is uh, the first time I've actually done this by the seat of my pants. I'm trying not to be able to use a pitch, and uh, I guess I slightly failed. And uh, but uh, I think. Thank you for your suggestion. I'll uh, make sure to utilize it next time. Good luck. Yeah, there, I, I agree with that. I think the other piece that kind of uh, was, you know, like an orange flag is that you're getting inquiries from these industries, right? So it again, kind of signals that you're waiting for things to come to you. What I would say is be in, in the pitch that you're giving to investors, show them what you're trying to build and who, who this appeals to in terms of, you know, this is the target market. This is the target customer I'm going after. This is who faces this pain point. This is who I think I'm going to sell into because that gets us to think about how big that market is and contextualizes your product through your eyes, right? So I think that's super helpful. I would also say in the amount that you're trying to raise, um, 
it'd be like if, if that's the total goal i wasn't sure if you were just looking for commitments of you know multiple hundreds of thousands or you know any check within that range what is the total that you're looking to raise and what does that really unlock for you right for for a business like this if you're trying to set up manufacturing i don't think 250k gets you there right so what what really is that total amount and what do you really forecast the growth of this company to be after you get that? Right. So some of those numbers, I think in this case, because it is, you know, a core like hard product that you're selling would be really helpful to see. Well, the, uh, my lab manager uh, gave me the number 250,000 to complete development of all the products that we're developing. That gets us to the point where we have to go after additional funding to be able to set up the warehouse for mass production. So uh, just I, to the, I think uh, the, the listening to that, it's, Try to think about not having to continue to raise capital as you continue to grow, right? That's execution risk for any investor. I would much rather invest into a $2 million round knowing that you don't have to raise capital for another 18 months than give you 250K and then three months later, you now have to raise capital to actually commercialize it. So um, you, well, I, was, you, I was trying to stick to the rounds, you know, the uh, pre-seed, seed, round A and so on and so forth. Uh, not trying to I don't try know the other investors feel like I don't think nomenclature matters anymore. Like to me, I don't care if you're pre seed, seed, series A. It's like the, the quantum of capital you're raising is the most important thing. And what does that unlock for you? I think people like no. have like seed fours and like series A pluses. It doesn't matter, right? It's more about what is the number and how much runway does that give you? Very good to you know. Can name your funding round, whatever you want. You can call it Banana Rama for whatever anybody cares. <laughs> I mean, you know. If you look at my deal sheet, you know, there's no, there's like one series A and one, you know, seed and everything else is like seed plus, you know, series A plus plus or something like that. So it, you just name it doesn't however matter. you want and it doesn't matter. So well, we've got a valuation of 5 million um, and we just, we hope to uh, be able to get all the funding we need for um you know, to be able to get it mass produced and start setting up logistics and distributorships, we're hoping for by the end of 2025. Um, and I will refrain from using the rounds in the future and I'll give the uh, maximum amount needed. Yeah, it's a very interesting company. The problem for me is the vertical is very convoluted. And this is another one where it didn't go to the investment committee, but someone brought it up in a manager's meeting probably 15 months ago, maybe closer to 18 months ago. And because this vertical is very kind of convoluted, it almost becomes like a uh, capital race. Uh, whichever company can raise the most capital can put out the most advertising and expand the quickest. And they're the ones that are going to win. And simply because of that, we tend to stay away from it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. We will connect you uh, with any of the investors if anyone would be interested uh, later on, but stay in the chat, uh, share your uh, GGW profile. And uh, yeah, uh, I love this uh, comment, comment about Banana Rama around. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> so it's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna type that in right now. So. I'm at Banana Rama around, so we are raising uh, five billion. <laughs> yes. at, uh, three, maybe I'll make that, maybe that'll be the new, the new name of my company. The Banana Rama Company. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank I'll do you, a lot man. better next time. Okay. Appreciate your interest. And the next person to present is as a. Uh, please use your real names, uh, otherwise we won't let to pitch. But as a, uh, are you ready? As a, your microphone. Yeah, I can see your video, and you're trying to turn on. It's muted. Yeah, you're muted. No. Okay, uh, uh, try to fix your mic uh, and we will uh, let you pitch right after. So maybe rejoin and the next person to present is uh, Arjun. Uh, Arjun, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, you got two minutes, go for it. Hi. Uh, Arjun, I'm the founder and CEO of iWits. I have developed a new marketplace. This is not a regular uh, marketplace. There are hundreds of marketplace applications, but we invented a new way of selling and buying products. It's completely a new world is going to see a new way of selling and buying. So international patent search also confirmed that there is a novelty and uh, industrial applicability is there. And this logic can be applied in every sector. The total market size is going to be $1 billion. 
and we are going to raise 50k for 2% equity share. And uh, actually, the problem is in every marketplace, uh, a seller has to go to a top process to sell his product. But we implemented a new way of selling and buy products when seller posted a uh, price and buyer can go and post it in open hidden bids. That open and hidden bidding process can fetch the better price to the seller and uh, buyer also is very useful to get the best product. Any questions? Okay, thank what you so you much. The total market was? Uh, $1 billion. Yeah, that's a little too low for us. I don't quite understand, right? Like what the, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's very interesting. And if you see the uh, process, okay, it's even Indian government also interested to take over this product. It's a new marketplace with a new formula and the world is going to see a new way of selling, buying and products. So what you're what you're laying out is basically how like Google ads, Facebook ads, et cetera, currently no, prices ads. It's, it's it's a Facebook, you know, Facebook marketplace. No, no, I understand, but I'm saying the method of like a double blind auction or whatever it might be is is known, right? Like that is how Facebook ads and Google ads currently sell ad space is through that mechanism. Oh, this is different. This is totally different. I think I think it's theoretical for me right now, right? If if it were if you had a platform that we could actually, you know, engage with, it might make yes. more sense. Yes. But I also don't believe that a billion dollars that that just sounds like a very convenient TAM. Um I I I think I I think we need to do a little bit more more research uh and then come back. Yeah, sure. Can we connect in LinkedIn? No. Okay, yeah. If you see the demo, then you like it. If you don't like it, just okay, don't do anything. Thank just you. see the demo. Thank you, Arjun. Uh, uh, I guess yeah. Angelica, I met you. Are you guys? Arjun, yes, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to. Um, it, it is not my space, and I am I am out. However, I would like to offer you a piece of advice. When you're trying to engage with investors, you cannot just tell them I have invented the next best thing after sliced bread. You need to actually say what it is and how it works and how it adds value. Daniel has a really good video on how to do an elevator pitch, and I would really recommend that, that you use it because it is to your advantage and to, you know, anybody who's listening to you would be grateful to have more clarity out of that. Yeah, I have a video, elevator video pitch. Can I extend? Yeah. Thank you, Arjun. Appreciate that. Uh, thank, thank you for your time. Uh, there is a elevator pitch video, how to prepare an elevator pitch so you can convince investors on uh, about your solution. And uh, uh, the feedback we are, we are sharing to help you so you can improve and actually stand out in front of investors. Uh, appreciate your time. Stay to the end to support others. And we are moving on to the next person, uh, which would be, uh, again, SA. Uh, SA, are you ready? Uh, you you were trying last time, and let's try again. Kyle. Yeah, my my name is Kyle Christopher. I'm not sure why Zoom's not saving my name, but I'll uh, I'll put my message in the link. Uh, my name is Kyle. I'm with the company Medical Resource Group, and MRG Health is the name of the company. We have a platform that's called Smart Care 360. We're a comprehensive disease specific uh, virtual care management platform that's built around a multi payment model, so fee for service, CPT codes, as well as value based incentives. We integrate with over 250 devices, including uh, FDA approved vital tracking monitoring devices, as well as Apple, Fitbit, Garmin, and other uh, wearables. Um, we built the platform around uh, 50 different uh, chronic disease care pathways that are around standard guidelines and were directly integrated to a clearinghouse and in network with over 50 insurances. We started out going B2B, but we're now getting ready to go direct to consumer. Um, we've hit $100,000 in, in reoccurring revenue uh, monthly recurring revenue. We are currently sitting on over 10 contracts with about 10 to 15,000 patients waiting to get on our program. As long as a patient has one or more chronic disease, they qualify. Um, we've really consolidated a very, very fragmented industry of digital health um, to where we now have um, a, a, a disease specific pathways around every digital health uh, vertical payment model. Um, the company has been in stealth mode. We're, we're just coming out of stealth mode. Uh, we have an amazing team of physician executives and influencer, uh, influencer status uh, physician executives that are that are all uh, on board and fully committed to this mission. Um, I've met with a couple ministries of health, uh, so there's some international opportunities as well. 
uh, but we're primarily focused on the domestic market right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm open for any questions uh, or any any concerns. The software is in eight different languages, uh, and we're uh, you know looking for two million dollars to to scale, and I've closed eight hundred thousand of it. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, just sharks your questions. Who wants to start? AJ. Yeah, look, I think this space is really interesting. I, I come from uh, a healthcare strategy background, so deeply aligned with the pain point that you're trying to solve for. It is a little bit outside our sweet spot, uh, but I would be curious kind of, you know, in, in identifying kind of who your target customer for this would be, what do you foresee, you know, the 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 go to market that's successful in this space, right? Because there there is a lot of competition and a lot of embedded kind of inertia around switching yep. platforms. So what differentiates you what differentiates you I guess from how you're going to sell into that core demographic? Great question. So uh, our platform integrates and works alongside the EMR. EMRs are made for documentation and billing. They're not made for the patient experience and getting the patient to do certain things to improve their clinical outcomes. So we're not really competing with the EMR as far as our go to market. We started out with the private practice subspecialties. It's built by first subspecialty vertical markets. Those are very, you know, uh, short sales cycles. We can get a few thousand patients with each little contract. We then are now after also going after community health systems, FQHCs, and we're now also targeting payers. So yeah, it just depends on the payment model and which problem we're addressing around chronic disease management. So the providers paying for their patient panel. No, this is all billed to insurance. We do this under a managed services model where we provide all of the services. We do the billing on these services that are rendered through our platform. As the collections come in, we have a management fee. We get 60 cents out of the dollar. They get 40 cents out of the dollar. So it's a passive revenue stream that's billed to their existing patient base that they're not doing this currently. Last year, Medicare increased the reimbursement rates by 41% because they're trying to incentivize doctors from practicing medicine in the old way and start adopting these new care models and payment models. Okay, interesting. Um, uh, not our space, but best of luck. Thank you. Yeah, I find this very interesting. So I'll take a closer look at this one. All right, one shark is in, one is out. What about Angelica? Um, I, I find it very interesting and thank you for the pitch. It is an important topic to tackle but it is not my space, so good luck with everything. I appreciate your time and your feedback. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you uh, for your presentation. Please share your GGW profile on the chat with others on the, uh, uh, on the chat. And we're moving on. Uh, the next presenter is um, uh, Josh Rosen, Fast Runner. And uh, after Josh will be Queen and uh, Queen Farm, and we will close the session. So, Josh, are you ready? Josh, are you ready? Yes. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Go for it. Two minutes. Perfect. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Yash Rosen. I'm the CEO and founder of Partrunner. Partrunner is a logistics marketplace. Think Uber, but with larger trucks. We are live in six markets in Mexico and in four markets in the U.S., primarily in New England. And we help companies with last mile, middle mile deliveries. So we have in our network owner operators and fleets that have pickup trucks, cargo vans, box trucks, you name it, flatbeds. And we help companies like Ferguson, Graybar, Amazon, Walmart, and other prominent companies move product on the bulkier side, similar to how you would schedule an Uber. That's essentially how partners use us. We do single stop routes and we do multi-stop routes. We're doing in about half a million dollars a month in gross revenue. We do about 3,000 services a month and average about 20,000 stops a month. Yeah. And happy to answer any questions. And we're raising right now a great round of 1.5 million, which we have 400K committed. And we're seeking a lead investor to set the terms for the bridge. Thanks. Fantastic. Great job. Good pitch. Thank you. Yes, Shark, your questions. I think it's interesting. It would be great to understand how you're selling into them in terms of business model, um, like what what you're forecasting, right? In terms of what last year looked like, what this year is going to look like, where you're seeing a lot of traction from the customer side, and there's there's a variety of options in in a bunch of different geographies, like what the go to market really is to target a Walmart in a specific geography versus contracts they may have that span nationally, right? So I think those things would be great to hear as part of the pitch. 
Um, would love to hear the responses if you have them now. We, it, it's outside our speed spot a bit, but I really like this space. Um, and I think there's a lot of opportunity in it. Yeah, maybe I can respond to a couple of, the, of the, those questions. So we're we we have a mid so we're we're going after mid market companies and enterprise companies that have kind of multi locations across multiple states. The growing segment right now is actually just last mile and middle mile services. Average route average stops in a route are about seven stops in a route, and um, I, I don't know if that helped answer some of your questions. But that that's, those are are the growing segments right now, and and, and companies we're going after. That makes sense. It's it's more if you're raising a $1.5 million bridge, right? I want to understand what your milestones are that you're raising this bridge around. And a lot of that's like revenue growth, you know, unlocking new geography, yeah. unlocking the market. So if, if that's the raise you're coming to the table with, you need to understand a little bit more context around the business to now yeah. contextualize what that kind of raise means to me. Yeah. So we, we are planning on growing about 3x this year. And it's it's essentially opening up more markets. We we plan to expand into four more markets in Mexico and keep on expanding with the some of these bigger brands. So it is essentially market a market expansion and in 3x growth in terms of business. Thank you. Um yep. what about Matthew and Angelica? One shark is out. Seems like an interesting concept, it just doesn't do anything for me. I'm out. Thank you, Angelica. Yep. Yeah, it, it it's not it's not a space that I am particularly interested in. Then I would have loved to hear a little bit more about um, an impact that you may have on on CO two or things like that. So I'm I'm definitely on, on another. Uh, I'm looking for other things, but it is an important issue. So good luck with everything. Thanks. Just Angelica, just as an FYI, we are introducing electrical trucks. We're piloting in next month three vehicles in Mexico City. There you go. Like Excellent. <laughs> yes. Well, Let me know how that goes. <laughs> I love entrepreneurs. Like every single opportunity. No, uh, you yeah, maybe I'm not interested. But okay, I have a response to that as well. Like great job. I love entrepreneurs. <laughs> it's beautiful. It should be so energizing. It really is. <laughs> um. Yeah. And uh, Yosh, great job. Uh, great traction. Uh. Yeah. And I'm currently in Mexico City. Happy to meet with you for coffee if you want to. And. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's move on. The final presenter for today is a Queen Fam. Thanks. Uh, let's close the session with the final presenter. Uh, Queen Farm, are you ready? Yes. Uh, last but not least, I hope yeah, <laughs> you guys are exhausted right you now. <laughs> hope everyone it. is uh, Friday in, uh, evening. Hope that everyone is not so tired. Um, so my name is Queen Farm. I'm the founder and CEO of Tour Mega. Uh, we have made a search engine uh, for tours and activities and a global distribution system. So we aggregate tours from different marketplaces like Viator, Get Your Guide, et cetera, and put everything in one place for you to search from. And as a result, we have uh, the largest inventory worldwide with 300,000 activities in 190 countries and 5,000 cities. So we also standardize the data and uh, normalize it and build uh, what's called a GDS, a global distribution system for tours and activities. Uh, the space is market cap is 260 billion spent per year. And uh, only 10% of it is done online. So there's a lot of opportunity for growth, obviously just capturing 1% of the market is over two billion in revenue. Um, you know, we started out with B2C, we were affected by COVID and uh, now we pivoted to B2B2C. We still have B2C uh, ongoing. Um, and in the last six months, we made some good progress. Um, we recently closed a, 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 club, a partnership with Google. So Google Travel uh, just launched a things to do department just one year ago. So we will live on Google Maps. So that's a really exciting opportunity for us. We closed another uh, partnership with uh, B2B Travel Sales. Um, they, are, they are working with 450,000 travel agents. Uh, so with, uh, and then another company is an in-room tablet for hotel. 
uh, they are in, you know, 30,000 hotel rooms. So all these will give us, you know, easily between two and 10 million next year or next two years in revenue or more. Uh, so uh, we're looking to raise 2 million at uh, 10 million in market cap. Um, yeah, uh, that's it, yeah. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, Feel free to ask. <laughs> uh, there's three big GDSs. Company is Gal Sabra, Galileo, and Amadeus. You know, when you book any airplane ticket and hotels, it goes into the back end. And they've been around for 20, 30 years, but there's nothing for tours and activities. And the space, you know, is now a lot bigger than the other two spaces, or at least the same, because the other two spaces are very mature. This one is just a tip of the iceberg. Uh, we wrote all the data convention, you know, ready to do all sort of AI. You, you pass time. Yeah. Uh, you pass time, and uh, uh, yeah, it, let's switch. Sorry. To, yeah, uh, unfortunately, we cannot see some background uh, issue here, but uh, still, uh, let's ask if any of the investors got interested, uh, if they are in or out. And this is the final, final presentation for today. Um, let's start with Angelica, probably. I, and I am out just because of the the race objective. What I would like to know, though, is um, is the space is the concept defendable, or is it just a first mover advantage that you're defending? Sounds like uh, there is space for many players. I just would like to understand the dynamic of the strategic positioning. Yeah, so the um, the, the the partnerships is you know there's no there's no such thing out there as a search engine. Nobody has built it successfully yet. The data is very fragmented. And if anybody has done, they have done it. Nobody has done it. Uh, and we also build this partnership framework to allow any uh, hotel travel company to work with us. So this increased their revenue source that didn't exist before. So we create a whole new income vertical. Right now, they just let, you know, travel agencies put up like routures and and flyers and stuff. Uh, so actually the data itself is very complicated. We built a very solid technology and we have a patent we're gonna file. Uh, you know, these, these three big companies, GDS's company in the back end, they are like a multi-billion company. Like they are the biggest three GDS's, but they haven't, they themselves haven't figured out how to build this back end system for tours and activities. And we did, right? So uh, it's, it's whatever we built is actually a very big deal. Like if you think about it nowadays, you don't worry about what, what airplane ticket you flew with or what hotel you travel, but you hotel you stay at, but you know, what what, what are you gonna do? I'm looking. <laughs> yeah, uh, you probably wanna stop uh, somewhere uh, because okay. there are other two investors. Uh, so Thank try you. to be more concise with your answers. Thank you, Angelica. What about Matthew and AJ? I mean, I like the vertical, but unfortunately, I backed a different horse, so it wouldn't be ethical for me to kind of even take a phone call about you. So sorry. Okay. Thank you, AJ. Yeah. Hey, look, I think I think there's a few things you can make tighter about your pitch. Um, in the the storytelling element, you you lay out a pretty compelling picture for the B two B two C use case, right? But my mind, when you start, goes to the B two C use case, right? It's very tough to find tours, and it's a very small portion of the market. But if you say that 90% of, you know, like identification or booking of tours happens with a person or with a large business, then you can really clearly identify the B2B to C use case as the one to target. And that's not necessarily one that Viator or, you know, Airbnb is, is going after. So I think that paints a compelling picture. But for me, I don't think the B2C is, is you know, a, a backable approach. I think the B2B to C might be. And if you um, you know identify any traction in, in your pitch that shows um, that these these large businesses need this type of solution and you're able to bridge that gap for them, I think you get a lot more investors interested in this approach. For us, it's not a space that we can really help with. So uh, for that reason, I'm unfortunately out. Uh, but I think you have something here. It's just the way that you position what you have and what you're going to try to achieve with it that I think will get a lot more investors interested. Thank yeah, you. I'm sorry. Uh, I think I I got it miscommunicated. I we are focusing on B two B two C and not B two C. We started out with B two C. We pivoted to B two B. That's why we closed a partnership with Google. This is our biggest win. It's Google, right? So uh, in the next few months, you're gonna see us everywhere on Google Maps. We will be live on Google Maps. So that's a really big deal for us. Yeah. 
and that should generate multi-million revenue. We, we, we actually one of their first partner uh, uh, besides Viator and everything, yeah. That's really impressive. I think I think using that as part of what your pitch is centered around, I think gets a lot more folks interested, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you could lead us in that way to, to, to see your business as that. And I wouldn't even distract with the B2C use case. You mentioned the B2C is picking back up. It shows lack of focus, et cetera. Just say I'm a B2B2C company, and this is where I think there's a ton of value, and look at this Google partnership we landed. That should get people interested. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much for the feedback. Thank you so much. And uh, this is the final pitch for today. Thank you for the feedback, for your uh, presentations, for uh, for being with us today. It was an uh, awesome, amazing event and great presentations. And sometimes we've done uh, some direct feedback just because we want to help you. Uh, and uh, this is uh, not only where you raise capital, but this is also where you get feedback from real investors. So with that, uh, before I give my final words, uh, I want uh, to let investors to close the session. And uh, before we start this, uh, I shared a few links here in the chat. Please RSVP to the next uh, pitch event that will happen in two weeks on uh, August 11th, GG Double Sharks 26. And uh, of course, if you're not on our platform, uh, investors, advisors, startups, Please go and uh, create your startup, uh, your personal profile so you can match. And finally, uh, please share your feedback on our uh, event so we can actually take this into account to make this event better. And we hope uh, it brought a lot of value to you today. And we will see you, of course, uh, next events as well. So before closing, let's uh, close the session uh, with what investors have on their minds. Angelica, you want to start? Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, Daniel, for organizing a really good event. You and your team are always outstanding. Uh, thank you, Matthew and AJ, for, for sitting on the panel. It is, um, it is inspiring to hear your questions and your comments, and, and it's always enriching from this side. Thank you, all the companies, for pitching. It takes courage um, to do this in front of a blind audience that you don't know. Um, it, it, maybe this is something you, you haven't done. Please take every comment as, um, as something to make you grow. It is our vision as judges to find good companies and also to help companies become even a little bit better. Uh, so good luck to everybody and I look forward to the next event, which I'll be able to participate. Thank you, Angelica. Great to have you every time you're with us. Um, and Matthew, you're going next. Yeah. It was great to be uh, here again. A lot of really good companies, a lot of really good founders. Um, looking forward to next time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and AJ, you'll be closing uh, the session. Uh, what Do you have any feedback or maybe words of wisdom, whatever you have on your heart for the startups today, please feel to share. Yeah, look, absolutely. I, I think the this session today exemplified a lot of why, you know, Matthew, uh, Angelica and I got into doing what we what we do. Um, it's it's probably the most daunting thing in the world to start a company from scratch, right? So understand that by being part of this call, you're already much braver than I am, right? So so kudos to you for doing that. Um, also, just understand that you know it's not it, building a company is not easy, right? And picking the space that you build a company in is super important, but telling that story is also super important. Um, you have a lot of power in building the company that you want to build and conveying that company in a way that that makes sense and achieves the goals that you have. So a lot of the feedback that we gave today is meant to be constructive, right? We, we understand that you're taking a massive risk. Uh, we want to see you succeed because you're building in spaces that matter to you and ultimately will matter to a, a whole host. Of um, so so kudos to each of you. Thanks for coming in front of us. Um, you know, if there's any way that we that I can help beyond this session, please let me know. I'm looking forward to being a part of this moving forward and, and keep doing what you're doing. The world exists because of people like you, not because of people like us. So thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. And uh, I really appreciate AJ that you joined us. We'll definitely look forward to have you again on future events. Thank you, uh, Angelica. Thank you, Matthew. And thank you, everyone who was featuring today. That's the courage. I absolutely agree with that. And it's OK. You fail. Sometimes uh, we all fail. It's normal. So we try to give you feedback and sometimes direct feedback. But this is how you learn and come back and make it better. Make sure to create your startup or investor or advisor profile on GGW platform. You already I've shared this many times so you can do this and connect to each other on the platform while we are preparing the next event. So it never stops. 
it want to create meaningful real connections among investors and startup by criteria you set in your profile. So make sure you work on your profile as well, and then our uh, technology will make the magic. Well, with that said, the next event is on uh, August 11th, uh, and I wish everyone the, re the great the rest of the week the, uh, and uh, enjoy your, uh, I don't know, whatever you do in the world. So please stay connected, help out to each other, and we will see you soon. Please support us on social media as you do, because we don't want to pay Google or Facebook for ads. We want you to support us free of charge, and the event will be free for you. Take care and have a great the rest of the day. Goodbye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.